Love it or hate it, the gaming world as you know it today has in part been defined by Fortnite. Basically this generation's Goldeneye. From grabbing other games' best ideas and tossing them into the battle royale, to creating a genuinely novel and distinct experience that other games are kind of desperate to emulate. In this video, we're going to break down the biggest things that Fortnite pioneered and changed in the gaming space. Like the vid, sub to the channel, and whatever your feelings about Fortnite, pay attention because we got to give credit to where credit's due. Recognize this song? Yeah, this isn't today's battle royale that little Jimmy is getting hyped over with his friends watching Twitch streams. This is Save the World, Fortnite's original tower defense meets third person hero shooter. Yeah, Fortnite wasn't a battle royale in the beginning. It had a co-op campaign focused entirely on crafting weapons and building and leveling up these heroes. Think a fusion of Minecraft and Left 4 Dead. Now that's all you need to know because not many people actually care about this model. But do you know what was popular at the time though? Winner winner. Chicken dinner. Yeah. Everyone and their mother was obsessed with the concept of Battle Royale. The popularity of PUBG absolutely caught the attention of Epic Games, which put out its Battle Royale mode a mere six weeks after its early access launch of Save the World, which is nuts. Fortnite by design lacked a lot of the depth and granular systems that PUBG had. Now some of the more hardcore folks might fault Fortnite for this, but I think one of the biggest reasons Fortnite thrived particularly for younger gamers, was its ability to be a simplified battle royale. You had a colorful map with distinct areas like Loot Lake and Pleasant Park. You saw a purple or gold gun drop and you just knew immediately what you were looking for. And there was also less strain on your PC overall than in PUBG, not to mention the console support. Fortnite may have visually appealed to a younger audience and had simpler shooting mechanics, but its building system had a very high skill ceiling which gave players a lot to master. In the early days, new players didn't quite understand building and they tried to play the game like PUBG, often losing to people who understood it. With its distinct art style and increasing cultural relevance in the early days, I mean we're talking memes and we're talking dance moves everywhere that you turned. Combined with popular personalities like Ninja hopping into the fray, Fortnite became a game for everyone. No one was excluded, which is rare as gaming can kind of be full of gatekeepers. Now Fortnite isn't the first game to develop the concept of a battle pass. Still, it certainly led the way in demonstrating what a good battle pass should be to a mainstream audience. Other leading live service games like Overwatch or Destiny 2 doubled down on loot boxes and microtransactions. The awful virtual currency models of predatory microtransactions from companies like EA or 2K were even worse when it came to their sports games. Fortnite, on the other hand, they struck a solid balance by creating premium skins, emotes, and gliders you actually wanted to buy, and also letting players earn many of these cosmetics through the Battle Pass. Not only that, but the Battle Pass included V-Bucks, the game's virtual currency, and it gave enough out for players to earn the subsequent season's Battle Pass 2, so potentially some kid who got like 10 bucks from their parent could get every Battle Pass from then on without really having to spend anything else. It's a brilliant loop. Over time, they have iterated on the Battle Pass and have been willing to experiment. Depending on each season, the Battle Pass would reflect that theme, something that I personally enjoyed. There were themes surrounding comic book characters and Marvel heroes, and a season of warriors from all over including the Mandalorian. Add on to the fact that a lot of these skins that you would otherwise have to shell out additional V-Bucks for, they were extremely limited time offerings, so everyone else wouldn't necessarily have one and you could kind of show off what you got. Still. Most of these skins felt and looked premium, softening the blow if you had to shell out real cash. Whether or not a premium skin is worth $10 to $20 is totally up to you, but I will say this, I'd rather pay that much for a sick glider skin with all the bells and whistles. But that's just me. With Fortnite, you effectively have the tools to acquire a battle pass every season for the foreseeable future. Not bad for a game that is free to play, right? Fortnite smartly recognized that purely pushing for victory royales isolated its player base into many losers and just a few winners. The isolation is real. For every 100 player server, 99 players have to get their ass beat, right? And the worst part of a battle royale is having a bad match 
and exiting around with minimal action. Not everyone is Ninja or Tifu, so the solution was to give players more opportunities to feel productive in matches. Even if they didn't get kills, there's still something to achieve, almost like a mini game inside each match. Enter the seasonal challenges. Many of these challenges were simple, such as getting several kills with a certain weapon, or simply dropping down into a named location like Tilted Towers. But there were a huge range of activities, golfing, basketball, dancing in the right places, stunting in carts. Other challenges were a little sillier, like finding a piano on a hill and playing a particular set of notes. Each week had a set number of challenges and a hidden secret. If you completed all of the main ones that week, you would unlock a hidden banner that had a clue in the image of where a hidden battle star could be found. Now travel to that area and search around and voila, you got a free battle star to help with your battle pass and XP gains. I gotta hand it to them. It was brilliant at times and a fascinating way of giving players a genuine reward for their playtime that looped back into their battle pass. So, depending on which YouTuber you follow, some will say that Fortnite's best ideas came from fans on Reddit. Whether that's true or Epic came up with this crazy time traveling reality warping plot as started with the masked visitor on their own is up for debate. But Fortnite has pioneered a living story in creative ways. Without going deep into a Fortnite history lesson, Fortnite started dropping hints by adding interesting stuff to the map and even in real life like ARG stuff. Maybe it was a bunch of telescopes staring at a meteor in space. Maybe it was a Durr Burger in the desert. Maybe a big purple cube that started moving if enough players damaged it across Fortnite servers. You could spend a game or two fascinated and then shrug and move back onto your quest of trying to get that victory royale. But then one time events started happening and they caused huge ripples in the community who took to the internet and they all started speculating. The story didn't always go down perfectly. For example, a very early event forgot to protect players, leading to the largest kill record in any Fortnite match when a player knocked out the structure from under a rocket viewing party of 48 players. But the events kept coming, with the thing with the butterfly, and the time that huge black hole happened, and this whole thing with Jonesy, you know, an original default character that is now suddenly a main story protagonist. Things got pretty wild. The benefit to all this is that there is now a narrative reason for changes to Fortnite, which creates a fun way for players to grow invested in the game beyond the need to win. Now you had a reason for why locations were changing and the map constantly was updated, and that just made players pay attention. You're not into Fortnite just because you want that victory royale anymore. You're into Fortnite because it's cool, and you're doing different things, and there's a living story. Meme skins like Peely suddenly became fan favorites in the storyline. Now it might seem minor to some, but creating a world in a battle royale or any multiplayer game isn't something that we should take for granted. But that's not an issue. Even if you didn't care about the story, you were playing this limited time game modes or events that kept popping up each season, and man, were these game modes a doozy. Now all these game modes that I was talking about earlier, some of these involved broken and overpowered mechanics, such as an infinity sword that was nearly impossible to obtain. Seriously, I spent an entire week before Christmas trying and failing to safely secure the coveted Infinity Sword. But moving on, who could forget Thanos, huh? Arguably one of the most iconic gameplay additions in the Fortnite early days. If you secured the Infinity Gauntlet, you would turn into Thanos and you could go absolutely ham on anyone who tried to challenge you. There were seasons where you could defeat Marvel heroes and villains in PvE boss battles on the island, and you could even use some of their powers. Other seasons had interdimensional monsters that could drop loot in high-risk, high-reward situations, and as time went on, the game modes varied and weren't just do different things in the battle royale. Suddenly you had team deathmatch games where you could respawn in 20v20 skirmishes, or a tomato versus a Durburger battle mode. There was also a robust community-made section of fun game modes or islands that players can join, some of them even being sponsored by Fortnite, such as a skate mode back in the day where you could try to collect as many coins as possible while cruising down a hill like City Escape and Sonic Adventure 2. Then there's a Party Royale, a non-combat island where you just hang out? Like, you can take part in little mini-games, you could chuck a bunch of paint bombs at your friends, you could participate in Fortnite's laid-back live events and concerts. I mean, they took things a step further with its live service models by truly going into uncharted territory and putting out certain live events that embraced celebrity and went nuclear. So these events are growing wilder and they're more ambitious as the seasons went on. 
Originally, you might have had a live event that involved unvaulting a weapon based on the community's choosing. Or maybe the marshmallow concert seemed really cool, letting you emote and mess around with giant light shows that filled your screen. And it was. The stuff actually was really awesome. These events were fresh, but the real bullseye that caused the entire internet to pause and admit, okay, this was sick, was the Travis Scott Astronomical Concert, without a doubt. Both the dance moves and these events started to take Fortnite out of just being a battle royale mode, and it firmly threw it into popular culture. Fortnite by this point had learned from prior live events, and they began hosting events in combat-free instances, so players couldn't really grief each other. They posted tweets warning players to join early at a certain time to help ease the server strain and allow as many people as possible to join the event. Top it all off with the fact that the events were absolutely nuts. I mean, these visuals were electric. The songs chosen from Travis Scott in particular were some of the mainstream hits sure to resonate with the players who loaded in, and they even served as an incentive for Travis himself, because the event teased a brand new track, opening a completely new avenue of advertisement and exposure for musicians and celebrities. Consider this. During the pandemic in particular, filmmakers and musicians started dropping reveals or concerts in Fortnite. Forget a rave or a Vegas residency. You'd get Chris Nolan showing off the first trailer for Tenet on a Fortnite theater screen. And I promise you, I am not just raving. But consider that these reveals and concerts are happening in Fortnite and it is normal. Because it sure as hell wasn't normal a few years ago. Sure, the game is sometimes a punchline for most non-streamers over the age of 16, but the haters aren't in on the joke anymore. The joke's on them, because they're missing out on all the cool events that have consistently pushed the envelope forward. Also, Epic took some serious risks in their experimenting with Fortnite. That transition to Chapter 2 is one of the best examples. So during Season 10's live event, Fortnite shut down its own game by creating this in-game black hole. All of its socials went offline, and logging into the game only showed a silent black hole with the option to exit the game. The result? The world might as well have ended. I'm not even kidding. People were going nuts online and kids were losing their goddamn minds, driving their parents crazy. After 36 hours, the game returned triumphantly with a brand new map for what Epic called Chapter 2. The event was yet another reminder of Fortnite walking into territory that few other games would even consider. Later on, other popular games would even take inspiration and copy this example, such as Destiny 2, shutting itself off before a new season, almost exactly like how Fortnite did. It's also worth mentioning that Fortnite is particularly good at taking other games' best ideas, and this is not an objectively bad or good thing, it's just a fact. Apex introduced the ping system, for example, and the ability to respawn teammates, and boom, Fortnite adds those mechanics in like two weeks later. Among Us becomes a hit, well, Fortnite introduces its own Among Us mode as well. Among Us. 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 They're just so good at constantly eyeballing industry trends and copying positive elements from other games to help elevate their own. Consider for a moment that today, one of the things we reasonably expect now from multiplayer games is cross save and crossplay functionality. You know who you can thank for that? Yeah, Fortnite. <laughs> Like, before Fortnite, Sony in particular was incredibly stingy about creating this air of exclusivity. This was Sony's bread and butter, to be honest, especially since the PS4 was massively more popular than the Xbox One, and Sony quite frankly had no interest in losing its lead over its competitors. Therefore, from a financial standpoint, it wanted nothing to do with crossplay. For the longest time, Sony did all of these PR gymnastics trying to justify why it was so stingy, from claiming that they were doing it to save the kids, to general quality control concerns. All of these excuses, however, proved to be moot when Fortnite, quote, accidentally threw the switch on crossplay. With Xbox and Nintendo openly saying they would love to have crossplay, and Sony being the only grouch in the room pouting at the bargaining table, everyone's hand was suddenly shown and players clearly saw who the bad guy was. What's wild is that the biggest reason Sony eventually caved on some games is because of how ridiculously popular Fortnite was. No other game was able to twist Sony's arm and bully them in such a way to allow the PS4 and Xbox One crossplay to occur in particular, and by the end, Fortnite came out on top. It didn't just properly implement crossplay and crossplay for its own game, but it created a new normal for future games to follow. Now, big blockbuster games like Call of Duty, Apex, and Destiny 2 have crossplay functionality, with even more games introducing cross-progression. 
You know, love it or hate it, Fortnite's legacy is undeniable. The game has pushed the envelope forward from redefining how a live service game should reward players' time and money to experimenting with its own success, all while using the gobstopping revenue it's acquired to incorporate huge celebrity events such as concerts headlined by Ariana Grande and Travis Scott to turn itself into more than just a battle royale game. It has no issue with reworking its own gameplay loop and it has painstakingly crafted a living story that evolves with each new season over time. Trust me, there were times when I was just so over this game, and I think it can be overhyped, and I definitely think that it can be overrated, but to deny its accomplishments? That would ignore the reality. Gaming has forever been changed by Fortnite, and in many ways, for the better.